Hi, my name is Kai. I'm sick and make videos about my life and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you've never been here before. Uh, this video is all about my port placement. Wow. Um, been a long time since I thought I'd say that, but you know, here we are. Uh, okay. So I just got out of my primary, or uh, what? I just got out of her, yeah. <laughs> I just got out of an appointment with my primary position, and, um, yeah, so we are gonna- I have a referral to a vascular surgeon to have a consultation about placing my port. I'm so excited. No, okay, so if you guys have been following up until this point, if you haven't, go watch the rest of my heart series. You'll know that I have recently gone to Mayo for pot stuff. And essentially what I took out of that was that unless I have a working GI tract, there is not anything I can do to make up more fluids. And I don't have a working GI tract and nobody knows how to fix it. And so to combat some of this pot stuff, because I have hypovolemic pots, I need infusions because I can't drink enough fluids because my GI tract doesn't work. Yeah. So, we are currently ordering a coffee because obviously that is the best thing to do after a rough appointment. But yeah, no, so we put in a referral to vascular surgeon. They should call me about a week, two weeks and we'll schedule a consultation. And honestly, until then, I feel like this is all you're gonna hear from me. So I will see you then. <laughs> and maybe hopefully I'll be a little bit less stressed that time around. Needed this this morning. Hello, pardon the angle and my voice. It's been a day. So uh, last I checked in, I think I had just gotten out of my primary appointment and was told that, you know, in like two weeks they would call to schedule a consult for port placement. And then, you know, after that we would reconvene, think about it, all that stuff. Um, and now I have port placement surgery scheduled for Tuesday. It's Thursday. Well, now it's Friday morning, but it was, I haven't gone to bed yet. It's still Thursday. Which means that's like four or five days away. And I don't know how to feel about it. I guess like, they were like, okay, well, I don't think we can get you in on like tomorrow, but how about Monday? And I was like, no, oh, thank you. I said, no, thank you. Because I'm a genius and I, no, thank you. Um, and then panicked and the week after that is my spring break, and then after that is a new quarter with new classes, and I don't for certain know most of my friends' schedules yet, so I was like, Tuesday. I know for certain one of my friends is available between classes, so I wonder we're going to do Tuesday. I'll go to my 8 a.m. class, get out at 10.30, and then I will go home, feed this little monster, and then I will, my friend will pick me up, and we'll go to the hospital, and then surgery, and then we'll come back, and I will feed this monster again, and then we'll go to class in the evening, which is maybe not my smartest idea, but it's my finals week, because we're a quarter system, so we have 10 week quarters, um, which means we have finals right before spring break, and then we have three sets of finals every year. That's great. But, um, yeah, so this is, next week is like my finals week, so I managed to schedule surgery during my finals week. I thought I had a little bit more time, but then, like, before I had to schedule this, but then I had to schedule it, and I was like, oh my god, panic. Tuesday. Um... So that's what we're doing. It's fine. Everything will be fine. I already cried in panic today, as you can tell from my voice. So it's like 2 a.m. I'm going to go to sleep or try to because I have a very busy weekend. 
So I have a very busy week this week already. Um, I'm carrying a bunch of dresses for um, I'm helping out set up the cocktail party and then get to attend said party. But I quite literally have surgery on Tuesday. And so I'm still doing everything that I need to do this weekend, but I'm kind of like, okay, let me meal prep, let me get all the shopping done that I need, let me do all the house cleaning to make sure everything's totally set up for surgery. On top of literally volunteering and like meetings and everything else I'm supposed to be doing. And a photo shoot this weekend, so, you know, it is what it is. We'll make it work, somehow. <laughs> uh, so this is my very last time in formal wear before I have a port. So I just thought I would say hello in my formal wear without a port. Okay, so I went shopping today um, because today's Saturday. Part placement is on Tuesday. Don't ask what my hair is doing. I have no answers. But um, essentially most of the things I got were super easy things that didn't have to be cooked a lot or like snacks. So I have like Velveeta mac and cheese cups so I don't actually have to cook anything because this is like one of the lower fat mac and cheese which makes it easier for my stomach to digest. I have microwave rice so we don't have to cook rice. I've got my chips and they are literally right here. So everything is at level for me to just kind of grab. I don't have to bend, I don't have to move, I can just grab and go because I don't want to move that much and easy. So yeah, that was that's my grocery trip prepping. Hi, it is Monday morning, it's like 4 a.m. Um, but it feels like Sunday night to me because I haven't gone to bed yet. Uh, but it's technically Monday morning and tomorrow is part placement. My last full day with nothing on my chest. Oh, that's crazy. Anyways, um, if you can tell, I'm a little bit stressed about it. And, like, I'm not even stressed about the surgery itself. Like, I'm not really sure what I'm stressed about, but I'm just stressed. I don't really know how to, like, even verbalize any of this. I'm just kind of stressed. I'm stressed because I know my life is going to change. I'm stressed because it's... I'm trying to do a this during my finals week and still go to class. I'm stressed because like, I don't know, so many stresses, but well, I'm just coming to say hello. Um, yeah, anyways, I'm stressed. I, I haven't slept because I am honestly stressed, but I am just, well, oh, there we go. Um, whoopsie. I'm journaling right now is what I'm doing to hopefully just kind of get the stressy emotions out so I can actually go to bed and get at least a few hours of sleep before class today. Um, I guess we'll see if that happens, but yeah, I just, I wanted to update and say that I am stressed. Like, I feel like so much of the online chronic illness stuff is so like, people just always seem so calm and collected to me. Uh, I am not calm and collected in the slightest ever at all, so I am just, I just want to like share this side of like, I'm not calm collected, I'm not like, oh yes, poor placement, I know how to do this, I am an expert. Uh, no, I have no fucking idea what I'm doing and I'm stressed. Um, I'm not even stressed for any particular reason, I'm just stressed. And you know what, sometimes that is how life is, and if you are in a similar position, it's okay to be stressed and not have your shit together and yeah anyways that's that's all i want to say i'm gonna go finish journaling and hopefully sleep i don't think i've actually explained anything about having a port yet um so i if you don't know what a port is it's pretty much like a permanent iv that they surgically place in your chest and it's under the skin and then you can just stick a needle in and out of it really easily you don't have to try and find a vein it makes it very simple and just a lot more painless, hassle-free to use IVs and you don't have to worry about veins collapsing or anything like that. So essentially it is a permanent IV that you get put in your chest and if you actually wanted to learn more about the science, um, go ask my best friend Google. I'll tell you everything you need to know. But I am getting a port for IV fluids because 
my if you haven't seen anything um check out my other videos but i have um gi tract like paralysis both in my stomach and in my colon so it's at both ends so i have a really hard time drinking enough fluids um like orally because my stomach doesn't like them um and my colon doesn't like to absorb them so i drink less fluids and then my colon does nothing to absorb the little amount that i do drink so i am uh, chronically dehydrated uh, I am right now. I'm like smacking my lips because they're so dry. But I am getting my port for IV fluids because I, right now, I'm doing them about once a week because of. I have a video on this, so I'm explaining it. Go check out the video I made talking all about IV fluids. Essentially, the goal is that we can increase them, the fluids, and not have to access my mates. That is why I am getting. Why am I filming at 4 a.m.? I'm not really sure. I'm sorry if this makes no sense. Okay, it's Monday evening. It's about like, well, I guess it's almost seven. Uh, daylight savings was this morning. Yes, this morning? Yesterday? I don't know what day it is. It was yesterday, and so it's still like really light outside, and it's like throwing me off. And I didn't think it was going to because it never throws me off, but it is this time. I don't know. Anyways, it's Monday evening, which means in 24 hours, I will be, well, I won't be back home. I will come home and I will be in class with a port. That's crazy. Anyways, because it's Monday evening, I'm getting ready, um, like tidying up, making sure everything's set up. So on my little cart next to my bed, this is my fun doodad of a medical cart. It's like literally right next to my bed so I can just reach in and grab stuff all the time. Um, but in it, I have got some nice fun stuff happening. I've got my bottle of prescription strength ibuprofen, 800 milligrams because I end up needing it. And I've got a bunch of like Cokes with straws set up. I've just got all my normal medical things. Um, but I set up, I moved my sharps bin because I probably won't need it in the next few days. Um, and just kind of put a bunch of Cokes there. Typically I keep them in the kitchen and I'll probably grab a chip bag and put it here. That way I have something like within arm's reach to kind of like go for if I'm hungry or thirsty or need something and don't really want to stand up. So that is the set up for that. I was also going to pack my hospital bag right now, but it's in my roommate's car and she's at class. So I guess I'll have to wait because I'm smart like that. Anyways, that is the update for now. Okay, it is like 9.55. It's almost 10 o'clock. Um, I am getting ready for bed. I took my meds like an hour and a half ago and I've just been editing videos. Um, and yeah, time to go to bed. My alarm I'll probably wake up at around 5 a.m. so I can like braid my hair and everything um, before my 8 a.m. class before Fort Placement. So <laughs> get all the sleep. I know I'm not even going to be able to sleep. I'm probably going to edit videos for another four hours because I am a little stressed. I'm like not nearly as stressed as I was. Like I feel like my space is clean. I made sure everything is clean. I have my to-do list for the rest of the week. Like I feel like everything is set up super well so I'm not nearly as stressed because I get stressed when I don't have complete control so everything has been cleaned I have to do this written I am in control so I feel a lot less stressed but I'm still a little stressed <laughs> ah, literally in like 14 hours that's surgery time okay time to go get ready for bed I'm getting my alarm just went off I'm like half awake 5.30 a.m. Let's go get ready. Just enjoying some last minute kitty snuggles before I have to get out of bed. So I know that uh, there's like differing depending on your doctor, your surgeon, all that fun stuff. There's like differences in when you're allowed to shower, how you're allowed to shower after port placement. Um, the general consensus I've seen is like after 24 to 48 hours, you can get it wet or you can't get it wet till it's healed. It's one of the two. Um, either way, I don't know when I'm going to be able to shower again, certainly not for at least 24 hours. Um, so, and it may be a week before I like actually can shower normally. So we are braiding my hair to see how long I can just rock the braids, um, and not worry about showering. So time to French braid while well, sat on a bar stool because sit down if you have pots, it just makes life easier. So you don't pass out when your arms are above your head. Every time I have a surgery procedure, we rediscover that I suck at braiding my hair, but we've got French braids. Now time to actually finish getting ready because that took me like 45 minutes like it always does because I suck at braiding. 
Okay, I am already um, got a little bandana on to protect the braids because these things gotta last. I've got my backpack, I am dressed, and it's time to go to my, that was loud. It's time to go to my first class of the day. Let's go. Like, men that, oh jeez, I could have had something to drink at ah! 7 a.m. and that, ah! Hi, um, I just wanted to say that technically my hospital said I could eat or drink up until like 7 a.m. this morning. Um, I have not. Um, because of my, like, gastroparesis, colon dysmotility, it takes a lot longer for things to leave my stomach. Um, so I tend to just veer on the safe side and, uh, like, not eat or drink a few hours before when they told me if they don't know I have gastroparesis, um, just in case. So I haven't actually had anything to eat or drink this morning, um, which is delightful. Um, but... Yeah, I technically could have eaten, or, and if you don't want to say I have gastroparesis, like, don't worry about it, but, like, yeah, I haven't eaten anything, and I really want caffeine. I feel a little bit, like, wee, but it's fine. We'll get through it. It'll be fine. But I look fucking Hello. horrendous. You look fine! <laughs> like, look, look, like, Wait, you're no, look, I did oh, not, I got out of bed, I put on clothes, and I came here. <laughs> I literally put on this hoodie, and I was like, this is my hoodie. I was like, you know what, it's St. Louis, because like, it's 314. So I put on my STL hat, like... Literally nobody cares, you're fine. Anyways, the point of this was to say we're here. Oh. In, in, in hospital. We here. We here in hospital. We have potentially already gotten lost. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. I don't know, I mean, I'm assuming 500 means the fifth floor. Yeah, because this is warm. Trump shoulder um and that's the worst part of this entire thing is that it's really just a Trump shoulder but a shoulder <laughs> that didn't work as much as I thought it would I hated every second of that <laughs> look at that it's like a little bump she there Ooh. and no tape it's just glue which is going to be terrifying Bianca for the rest of the day yeah how do you feel about this <laughs> a look of pain texting Malia like all your limitations all of my what? Your limitations. For Limited. Your no. <laughs> yeah. I can't lift more than ten pounds for like a week. It's fine. I it's go go for for oh yeah, I can't drink any alcohol for a day. Oh, that's oh, no. good. That's gonna be a real hard one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm like, hmm, you want some wine? No. Well, I can. I'm just gonna be extra loopy. No. Kaiser. <laughs> Kaiser. <laughs> but I could. But you won't. <laughs> yeah, un unfortunately, no. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna go get food. Um, but yeah, we're done. And it's literally in the exact spot I wanted, like perfectly. I didn't even tell them. And you got perfect spot. Nice. Everyone was really nice, by the way. And I made friends with every single person in that um, office, somehow. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Um, because I have class from 5 to 7.30 and then my friend who's driving me back home wanted to get food. So, um, it is 8.30 and I'm home and I'm currently drawing a bath because I can get it kind of wet. I just can't get it like too wet, um, for a hot minute. So I just wanted to draw a bath. I'm not going to like do much besides sit in it and like get the last of the iodine off of me because I hate the orange, but it's fine. So when I got to the hospital, we went upstairs. We weren't entirely sure where to go because there are two buildings that are like that. We have the Vascular Institute and then there's the Heart and Vascular. Um, two different things. The Heart and Vascular is where I had my ablation. Um, go check out that video if you would like. Um, but this was a separate building, which was really good because I was really worried about it being the same building. 
Um, so we went up, we just sat in the waiting room for a hot minute, they called me back, um, and I just had like a small little like curtained off room um, with like a lounge chair and there's another chair. Um, and so signed the paperwork and everything. Hi, Kiki. Signed the paperwork and then we got kind of started with everything. Um, so they went to place an IV and they were struggling. Um, and the nurse who was initially doing it was like, wait right here, I'm gonna go get the other nurse who used to be an ICU nurse to try and do this. Um, and they could not find a vein. Um, besides, cause they were doing, placing the port on my right side um, as per requested. And I, I wanted it on my right side. They were gonna do it on the right side anyways, so it worked out. So they're trying to put it, get a vein on my left side so the IV wouldn't be on the same arm, but no such luck. So they just used my right arm and we just went for it. Um, yeah, so they got a um, IV placed and then the ex something went wrong with the extension and massive warning for blood, trigger warning here. If you don't like blood, look away for a few seconds, but the extension started leaking and we didn't really notice. And so it was just like pouring my blood out and there's just a giant puddle of blood on the floor next to me. It was a, it was a moment. It was a thing. It was mildly entertaining, but that's fine. It was fine. Um, totally wasn't dizzy after that. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Fix that. Um, and oh, before they placed the ID. So I kind of came back in and they're like, okay, just strip from waist up. So I got to keep my pants on, my underwear, my belt, my shoes, everything. Um, which was really nice. So I literally didn't even have to take anything off. It was just take off the bra, tank top, and cardigan. Um, which I meant to show you guys my outfit earlier. I'm pretty much just wearing jeans and a tank top and a cardigan and a like bra that clips in the back so I didn't have to fight with a sports bra. Um, a tank top's really loose and easy to slide on. It's like a loose tank top and then the cardigan so I don't have to like put anything on over anything because it's cold. So I didn't want to put on like a heavy jacket or anything like that. So cardigan was my go-to. Um, and I was wearing jeans and tennis shoes because I was still going to class and I wanted to look somewhat decent for class. So, you know, but it was really nice. I didn't have to take my pants off because I did not want to put skinny jeans back on after this. I did have a change of pajamas in case. Um, so I could have just put on my pajama shorts, but it got really cold here. So I didn't really want to put on shorts. So that worked out in my favor. But yeah, I put on a hospital gown. Um, Put the IV in and then after a little bit we were ready to go back. I just kind of walked back um, to the operating room, had everything set up. They set up the sterile field so um, iodined everything. Also I'm not sure why it's so red but we're just gonna ignore it for right now although it is getting worse. It's fine. Um, but yeah so they set up the sterile field and then they kind of just did all of the like like blankets around it so that was the only part that was stop it that was the only part that was visible um and then they did like a tent so i could still breathe um then they did the uh happy juice as the surgeon said <laughs> which kicked in i mean it was just really light sedation it was only supposed to make me a little bit loopy um and it did for about like two minutes but i really don't like being like in any way drugged or sedated or anything like that um because i'm not in control and people are always like, oh my gosh, as soon as it kicks in, you won't be stressed anymore. And I was like, ha that's what you think. Uh, no, the second any sedation kicks in, I panic because I'm like, I'm not in control, I'm not in control, I'm not in control. And that's all that's going in my head. It's just, I am not in control, I am not safe. Um, so yeah, no, um, sedation always makes you stressed. But between being slightly a natural ginger and um, having EDS, it metabolizes super quickly. And I don't tell people that so they don't give me more so it wears off and I'm all good. But um, which is probably not what I should be doing, but it's fine, nobody question it, it's fine. Yeah, so it was like two minutes of me just going, oh my God, I'm not in control, ah, screaming. And then it kind of started to wear up and I was a little sleepy for like a hot few seconds. And then I was like, Hi, hey, uh, 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 surgeon, doctor, could you tell me exactly what you were doing as you do it? Because that way I'm not nearly as stressed. And I think I startled everyone because they all thought I was going to fall asleep. Um, no, I did not fall asleep. Not once. Um, there were moments where I got kind of sleepy or I was a little drifty, but like never that I was actually like, I was never fully loopy and out of it besides the first like two minutes and I never fell asleep properly. Like I was just a little spacey. Um, but yeah, it was like super easy. They pretty much just made this incision. Well, okay, so you can see where they poked me with lidocaine um, to numb everything. 
I'm not sure what order of events they did everything in because obviously I couldn't see it. But yeah, this was the incision to place the port and you can kind of see how it's like raised off the skin. Um, and this is like the pocket they put the port into. Then there's like threading and I'm not sure if you can see it, it kind of runs right here. Yeah, like kind of right here. I'm not, again, I don't know if you're even able to see that, but it's just like the tubing that runs up. And then this is where they put that tubing into the artery, into the vein, all of that. So you can see the initial incision, where the port is, the tubing that goes on the outside, and then how it goes into the vein. Um, and then you can see where they accessed it to make sure it was functional um, before they released me. Um, and pretty much they had an x-ray thing set up the whole time. So I think he was looking at the x-rays the entire time. I've seen some places where they place it and then they do an x-ray afterwards, but they had an x-ray set up the whole time. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was pretty much it while I was back there. It wasn't anything too, like, too fancy. I really couldn't see anything the whole time. Um, but yeah, and then for me, I was kind of worried about dressings and things like that because I've read a lot that some hospitals will do like dressing that you can't get wet for like a week some places do it for like 24 to 48 hours some places do stitches some do like the steri tape whatever and then the dressing um no so this is all glue if you can see the shine um so the glue will eventually fall off um <laughs> on its own i'm assuming but i don't have to go back in i don't have to do anything i'm just gonna let it fall off um and yeah i can get it wet not like I can't soak it, I can't get it too wet, but it can get wet, no problem. So I'm allowed to shower with it facing away from the water, things like that. So um, yeah, I think that's kind of the rundown. I uh, got back, like after they were done, they like did everything and then they sat up and then I kind of like walked me back to my little cubicle with a curtain and my friends came back, they took the IV out and then I got changed and I went home. Yeah, that was, that was it. We got Wendy's and then we came back to my place and then I went to class and then we got um, like poke bowls and then I'm back home and I'm running a bath right now and I'm gonna go take that bath. So that's my update for now. I will keep you guys updated, but yeah, it's a little bit bruised. It's a little bit sore. The numbing is still kind of like present in this area, um, but it kind of like, it's, it's sore. It just feels like everything's kind of pulling and tight and not adjusted yet, but um you know, I'll keep you updated. I'm gonna go take a bath. Hello. So I just wanted to update saying that I took some ibuprofen. Like I took like 800 milligrams of ibuprofen when I, like after I first got home. Um, and I just took like your average dose of Tylenol. So like, I've not actually taken that many pain meds since getting home. I think the numbing is completely worn off, but like, you know, I haven't taken any pain meds. It's still like, <laughs> Uh, pretty angry um like you can see the bruising but you can also see like a bit of red reaction so i'm not really sure what it is but it's not spreading and it's not getting worse so i'm just kind of like eh, it's probably irritation um oh i'm out of breath i just got in bed um anyways i did just get in bed i'm going to sleep it hurts a little bit to lie down on so i may just kind of be in a weird state of like half laying on my side half laying up i don't know we'll see but i'm so tired so i think i'm gonna sleep well despite the pain I don't know why I'm so out of breath, but good night. Hi. It's like 7 a.m. I don't have to be up for like two, three more hours. But I did wake up. And all the numbing is worn off. Ow. I can literally feel everything. I can feel like the incisions. I can feel where everything is. Ow. As long as it don't move, it doesn't hurt. But if I breathe in too deeply, fuck. If I move it all, ouch. Everything goes ouchy. I don't like it. I was freaking out a lot, but my like late night pain tolerance is a lot lower than my awake tolerance so when you're like and you're like half awake and you're in pain and you wake up and you're disoriented and you don't know how to handle it yeah it's not actually that bad like it still hurts but it's not that bad and honestly the worst of the pain is like not at the port at all like the port itself 
fine. It's the tubing that hurts the worst. It's like the tubing, like here's my pore, and then the tubing runs up and enters a vein right here. This is where it hurts the most. Holy shit, ow. But it's not that bad. Good morning. It looks so good this morning. There's like very little redness. The worst of the bruising is right where you can see the tubing and like this is where the port is but there's a huge bruise that's going down underneath it um and then there's some bruising that's going up to where the lidocaine was but it looks amazing like the bruising's pretty faint you can see where they accessed it obviously you can see the incisions but it looks so good however i am still in a bit of pain so i'm really glad that i have button-up pajamas because i can just unbutton i don't have to take this over my head and because it's really cold here I have some like button up sweaters that I can just not put over my head and just button on. So pro tip for port placement is make sure you have button shirts because they're a lifesaver. Oh my goodness. Um, in similar vein to that, a uh, clip on airy bralettes, super soft, no wires, um, are ideal because I can just clip them in front and then slowly inch them around to the side. Um, and they are super comfortable, um, and I don't have to, like, wrestle to get myself into them in the slightest, which is convenient. And I just slide sweater on. Oop. Also, sleeping went pretty well after I obviously woke up at one point kind of in a bit of pain. But after I, like, kind of went- I took some Tylenol, I went back to bed, um, and I was doing a lot better. Like, it didn't hurt nearly as much once I was like, oh, I'm awake, let me acknowledge the pain. Okay, it's not as bad. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the, like, when you wake up and you're half awake and you don't have a huge pain tolerance because you're trying to sleep and then you're just like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, that was last night. But I actually had a fair amount of sleep, so I still look like I'm exhausted. But, um, that was, I slept pretty well besides that. There were only a few other moments I, like, tossed and turned and woke up. But, um. Yeah, the braids are a little frizzy, but they're going strong, so we're just gonna go throw on a little bit of powder, because I don't want to do my makeup, but I don't want to be too greasy, so we're just gonna go throw on powder and <laughs> go to class, that's it. This is the uh, outfit, is a button-up sweater and leggings, because I'm tired! It is so nice to sit down in my car, because half the reason I wanted my pour on this side was because when I'm in a passenger seat, the seatbelt goes like this, but when I'm in the driver's seat, the seatbelt goes like this, which means that my port is not touched by my seatbelt when I'm driving, and I do most of the driving myself. So I'm so glad I can drive again because this is so much easier. I can actually wear a seatbelt properly again, so yay. Class went well. I don't think I like took a video, but oh well, I was at class, and now it is time to go home and finish up some of my finals. So yesterday, most of the pain was definitely in here, where you can kind of see the uh, tubing going into the vein. Today, it's definitely kind of a little bit sore everywhere, but the worst of it's like this patch of bruising underneath. I'm not really sure, but this, man, this part hurts a lot. Um, mostly, honestly, like, yeah, like I said, it's kind of a little bit sore. It hurts if I do any harsh movements, like move my head too quickly or something. Um, you can't even see the tubing all that much, but I can feel it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, it doesn't hurt that much. Like, it's kind of like a dull soreness that's not too bad all the time. But then when I move certain ways, it's like a sharper pain. Um, and if I poke the wrong spot, yeah, obviously it's gonna hurt. Um, but, like, just like Tylenol or Advil or Ibuprofen, like, all of those are doing the trick. And I've taken literally each of them at different points, depending on what I have on my person. Because I have so many drugs and they're not always in the same spot, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, the pain's, like, manageable. I'm not even all that tired. I'm a little tired, but yeah. I'm probably gonna chill in bed, though, for the rest of the day and do my homework from bed. I don't know, but I'm gonna go cook some food because I actually feel up to cooking, so let's go do that. Yeah, I'm tired. Like, I'm not in a whole lot of pain if I'm just chilling like not even all that much bruising I'm just tired now but I've got to go do homework might as well sleep everything's looking good still a bit of bruising 
I'm just hanging out in bed and doing some work. <laughs> stupid question but i would love to use a heat pack on my port as it's healing because it hurts um but i'm not sure like i know there's a little bit of metal in it i think it's titanium um but i don't know how much metal like if i put i know i can put ice on it but if i put heat on it will i accidentally heat up the metal and burn myself i don't know can you put a heat pack on top of a port it might be a really stupid question and it's like an absolute no or it's like, yeah, there's no problem, but I don't know. Do you guys know? Drop in the comments if you know because I kind of want, obviously it's not going to be very helpful to me because by the time I post this, I'll probably be healed, but um, maybe if somebody else is having a port placed um, and they want to use heat on it, that would answer their question, so. Hey, it's Thursday um, and yes, I am wearing the exact same outfit that I was wearing yesterday. I just got home from class and this was the last class of my quarter, um, so now I'm officially on spring break um, for a week, but next quarter, new classes, and it is my last quarter before I graduate, which is crazy, but um, Port's doing okay, Ooh. yeah, she's vibing, um, but I've got to go teach a class because I teach creative writing to middle schoolers, so I'm gonna go get ready for that, I've got like two or three hours-ish before I've got to go. So I've got plenty of time to eat and get everything together. So cheers. Had a bit of a costume change, um, put on a new sweater um, because I'm going to go teach and I'm not gonna try and put the t-shirt on that I'm supposed to wear for a uniform because this is a button up sweater. Um, so I changed from like the orange to a white. So at least it's a little bit less offensive of a not uniform shirt. Um, and it also has a button that I can rebutton, but it kind of hurts to have fabric touching it too much right now. So I'm just keeping it like tucked under my bra strap. So like there's not too much fabric <sighs> rubbing against the incision. And I just put on like mascara, did my eyebrows and lipstick. No, I'm not doing any more makeup. That's all we're getting. But yeah, I'm going to go to class and <laughs> go teach. Hello, I just finished teaching class. Um, not gonna lie, I'm in pain. I'm not feeling great, but that is because I was stood up teaching middle schoolers for an hour and a half, and I've got a lot of energy, and I don't. But I've got one last social commitment for the day. Well, I'm gonna go home, finish up a homework assignment, and then some friends and I are going out for a little final celebration, um, which I'm excited for but I'm just really tired and kind of ouchy and want to lie down and not really like do anything because I keep like moving around and aggravating it. However, I do think that it's looking pretty good if I do say so myself. Uh, so, I don't know. We'll just, we're gonna go have fun. Hello, I am currently in bed working. Um, have a frosted lemonade because I love making those and pour it, it's doing great. Definitely have a lot of bruising happening kind of all around, but the incisions are looking good. Yeah, and it pretty much feels pretty good. It's at this point just a little bit sore, a little bit of pain sometimes. Um, still taking Tylenol, um, but it's manageable without Tylenol now. But yeah, I'm doing okay. And my is come to say hello. Well, hello. Today is the first day that I have gotten all makeup and dressed up since surgery. It is Sunday. Um, I'm actually going to just a little drag event um, to write a piece for it for my school newspaper. Um, and I'm hanging out with like my bestie, so I'm excited. But um, honestly, today is the first day that I've been like not in much pain. And when I did a lot of research for port surgery and like what to expect and everything, I saw a lot of people going like, yeah, I was just a little bit sore, but like not that much pain, like, you know, and everything. Um, I mean, yeah, sure, maybe that's true for some people, but it's not like painless. Like, I mean, yeah, I still went to class immediately after surgery. It wasn't like it was like the worst pain I've ever been in my life, but there was a solid several days where it was a lot of pain. I would say like, like that Tuesday was painful, Wednesday was really painful, Thursday was really painful, and I was really tired by the end of Thursday. Friday, I woke up expecting to not feel, like to feel the same. Friday was when I started feeling like, oh, okay, it doesn't hurt nearly as bad. Yesterday was kind of the same deal, and I woke up today, 
honestly, like, the, like Friday and Saturday, I probably didn't even need to take any pain meds, but I still did. Today, I haven't taken any pain meds yet. Um, honestly, it's a little sore when I move too much, but it doesn't hurt that much at all. The incision is healing really, really nicely. Um, the bruising goes all the way down, however. <laughs> so the bruising probably looks worse than it actually feels. But yeah, no, I mean, it, it hardly, it's just a little, like now it's a little bit sore. So, I mean, honestly, like what to expect from port surgery is you can do things day of, you can do things several days. Be warned that you will want to, be warned you'll want to be patient with it. You'll want to be kind of slow moving. You won't want to really like be doing too much. Oh my gosh. Okay. But you can do things like day of the next few days. Obviously you can't lift more than like 10 pounds, which is a bit of a limitation. Um, but besides the like 10 pound limit, I feel like like those first few days, like, yeah, you're going to be in pain, take some Tylenol, take some normal ibuprofen and you're pretty much good. Um, and all of that, but like, yeah, it's not like you can't do anything, but you will be in pain for a few days. I mean, you have like, I mean, what? It's like a two inch incision. They shoved a bunch of foreign stuff into you and put some tubing into a vein. Like, yeah, that's gonna hurt. It's not gonna not hurt, but you can still do a lot of stuff. So it's not like the end of the world for sure. Um, I would say like, ideally take the day of the next day and maybe the third day off if you can, but like, if you can't, don't worry too much about it. But like having like those, like the day of and two days after is just to like chill and relax is probably nice. But beyond that, it's like, but yeah, again, it's not like terrible. And beyond those like two days, you still have the 10 pound limit for a week and you're still a little bit sore, but it's pretty okay. Like it's, at this point, I feel like I'm back to doing everything. Um, and that was given not resting the first few days. So I think if you actually rest the first few days, it might be a different story and you might heal the faster, but you know, it's, it does hurt. It does hurt. It just, it's not the end of the world. So, you know, that, that's been my experience with it. And now, uh, me and my new port are going to go Enjoy a drag brunch. No, you gotta cheer for me. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't thought it was a photo. No, no. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It has officially been a week since port placement, and I just want to check in, show you guys what it was looking like. Um, so, there's still a lot of bruising that's kind of coming down, but it's not that bad. Um, obviously, you can see the port here, you can see the tubing here. It's a lot more visible now that it's not, like, all swollen. Um, the glue's kind of, like, fading at the edges, but the incision point looks really good. So does this one, um, and the one on my neck is, like, barely there anymore. Um... But yeah, I mean, it doesn't even, it doesn't hurt all that bad. Like, I can obviously, like, touch it and everything. It's doing great. Um, it hasn't been accessed yet. So, I technically, you can access it, like, day of or the next day for the most part. Um, I won't have it accessed until next week for the first time. So, I'm definitely, it's getting a lot of time to heal before I even have to stick any needles in it. So, um, that's pretty nice. But, yeah, that is my week check-in. Hi, it is Friday, which means it is high echo. It has officially been 10 days since surgery. Most of the glues come off. So all of the glues come off from up here and it's just kind of like a small little, it's still healing, um, but there's still some glue left on this one, but it's kind of coming off. But like the incision looks absolutely amazing. Like it's really smooth besides this spot right here, which is a little scabbed over. The side is like healed really well, so. Heck yeah, I'm so happy. Hello, it is currently Sunday, which means that it is day 12 post-op. Um, and uh, it's looking fantastic. So the glue is all falling off. There's very minimal blue bruising left. You can see where the port is. You can see the incision. Um, you can kind of see where that tubing is and you can see that other incision. My neck is totally fine. Um, you can barely see it. I mean, you can see it. It's, it's not subtle for sure, but it's... That's looking really good. So um, I'm really excited. And Tuesday is when I get it accessed for the first time. So I'm going to bring you guys along with that. 
um, and you'll get to see me get access the first time, and then I'm gonna go ahead and end this vlog. So I do meet with my primary on Friday, and we're gonna talk a little bit about home health and like learning to take care of my line for myself so I can increase my infusions and do them all for my house and do it myself. Um, that's probably gonna be another video because this video is already long. <laughs> and thank you to anybody who's tuned in. Um, but yeah, I, you guys will get to see me get it accessed next, which I mean, it's gonna take like a second because of the magic of editing. Um, and then yeah, that, that, that's it. It's looking, it's great. And I couldn't be happier with like where it is or how any of this went. So yeah, I'm excited. Hello, uh, it is Tuesday. It has officially been two weeks since my port placement. Um, so I'm like 14 days post-op, which is awesome. The incision looks great. Hasn't changed much from when I last showed it to you, but we're on the way to the infusion center today. Um, for here's hoping, uh, first time accessing this port. Let's go. I am in my car and we are going to go home and it's kind of raining so I'm a little bit damp again but it's fine um yeah so access my port tonight it was fantastic um obviously they had to do the whole sterile thing which took a minute um uh, they had to like scan all the paperwork they needed to get all the stuff on file they needed my surgeon's name they just needed the like port information all that stuff so they just scanned my like port card and got everything done and then set up sterile field um and just kind of went for it and it was really cool and um if you guys are curious about how to access a port i know there's other videos on youtube i'm not gonna go into depth on it on this video because this video is really long i may do another one later especially after i learn how to do it myself but yeah it wasn't uh <laughs> the nurse took, uh, took care of everything gave me a mask i put the mask on so i didn't breathe on it i just kind of like pulled my sleeve down pulled my necklace over pulled my hair back and she like sterilized everything put the port needle in put the dressing on and then bam infusion didn't have to find a vein it hurt like if you've ever had earrings like your ears pierced and like one of them's like closed up a little bit in the back and you've had to like poke through a bit of skin to get like the earring in it felt kind of like that just this didn't even hurt that bad i will say the worst of the pain was like once the dressing was on like if I moved in a certain way, it just kind of pulled it in a weird way. And I think it partially just cause it's still a healing incision. I don't really know. Um, and I think it was just the dressing that was doing that and the way it was put on. So I don't know, it was a little bit sore if I moved in like one specific spot. Um, but other than that, like it was super great. They just kind of like pulled it and put a bandaid on and we were good to go. Um, and I'm like, I'm so happy cause it was like so much easier. I didn't feel any like the fluids coming in like I do with like a vein in my arm um which was so nice I could bend my arms because the only vein I have left is my right AC it's the only one anybody can get anything from and so I like can't bend my arm the whole time anyway this was so much nicer so much nicer and I meet with my primary on Friday to learn how to handle it myself and that will be a whole other video um but for now that's the end of this <coughs> Jesus. That is the end of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, I'm so sorry it's so long, but I kind of wanted to just keep in like all of my like pre-surgery anxieties, like everything afterwards, show you guys how it was healing. Like I just wanted to show you guys like as much as I can about the like what I went through personally. Um obviously everything is like my own experience, not somebody else's, but yeah. I hope you enjoyed. Um, don't forget to subscribe for probably more port content coming soon and like this video, all that fun stuff. Go check out my other videos below and I will see you next time. As always, much love. Bye.